Is there any way to put the comments over that picture? Uh -huh. Cool. Hi, I am Alicia. Oh, my cheeks look very pink. Let me fix this before we go fully left, y'all. I overblushed. I blushed for night and it is daytime. Um, hi, I am Alicia Reisinger, uh, and I own Wax Buffalo. We're a pure soy candle company located in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm excited to jump on with you today and do some fun little uh, DIYs with you. We're going to pour some candles. I'm going to teach you how to clean out your jars and make some melts. Um, and then I'll tell you just like so many stories while we're doing that in the two hours that we have together. Um, big shout out to Renegade for putting this together for all of the makers across the U.S., um, it's very cool. Most of us can't go to our markets right now. And so this is very exciting to be doing a virtual market. Although I wish that I was standing in a booth and I could just hug you right now. And it felt like real life, but this is as close as we get. And so I'm glad you're here. Um, okay. So today we're going to make uh, a candle. We tell you a little bit about our brand. We are a minimalistic, very modern looking brand. These are our jars. Um, they're amber with white X's and that's our classic line. Although we do a a lot of really fun collaborations and um, we do some fun like specialty items as well, but that's our main line. And we do eight scents that are our classic scents and most of those come with pretty in-depth stories and I'll tell you some of those today. Um, as well as we always launch seasonals throughout the year, which is really fun and it just allows us to kind of change up and test new scents. And so right now we're currently in our spring season, which means we have four scents available online. And of course through Renegade Market, um, we're having a sale. So everything is 15% off on our website right now. If you pop through into our website on our banner, there's a code at the top right at the very top of the website. Um, so use that code to get your discount today. It's just kind of our thank you for popping in and checking us out. We have a lot of really fun products. The spring line, which I was talking about. Um, we also have some DIY kits. So if this looks fun, making candles and it's something you wanna try in your home, I'll talk you through it today. And then of course we'll leave this live so you can always come back and um, pour candles with me if you want a little help um, doing it in your kitchen. Those are really fun and we've made them super affordable. You can pour two candles with everything you need to do it um, for $40 and they're 15% off today. So definitely something to tuck into. Um, to start, let's get our candle wax melting and then I can talk a little bit more about our company. Um, we are a pure soy wax candle company, uh, which is a vegetable based wax. It just is a clean burning wax, which is why we like it. We like to stay away from paraffin. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's really beautiful, just like floaty, pretty, creamy white wax. So it comes in these big old chunky flakes like this. And for a nine ounce candle, you really want about three cups of wax. I obviously can't count to three and talk at the same time. Okay, there we go. Three. Ooh, it got overflowy. I'm using this cute little... Um, candle maker that we sell on our website. It's just an all-in-one and it's a really easy way to just like make one candle at a time. We use it in the studio to test new scents and um, dream up new combinations. Um, and um, it's really fun for home use. But before you invest in a lot of candle kit making items, um, I totally would encourage you to just use what you have in your home. That's what I did. Honestly, when I built Wax Buffalo, I just used like big stock pots and um, like like Pyrex pours, you know, like you make your pancakes in and things like that. Um, my big goal was to not really spend any money trying to build this business. And of course, like when I was first pouring candles right after my daughter was born, um, I was just doing it for fun for our home. And oh, hi, mom. Hi. Um, just like making candles for friends and family. So a lot of the things I'll show you are things that we use in our studio and they can definitely like up level your candle making game, um, especially if you're starting to build a new candle business. And if you are, yay, the world needs more candle makers. Um, but if you're just doing it at home, there's a lot of hacks that you can use so that you don't have to spend a lot of money and you can just make beautiful candles. Um, okay, so this is going to melt and we melt our wax to about 170 degrees. This little, um, this little baby's going to do it for me. But if you're doing it on the stove, you're basically just going to put your pitcher with your wax in it um, into very hot water. I usually just did like a very, very low boil until it goes completely clear. And you'll be looking for kind of like an olive oil color, very clear wax, and it'll melt from this um, thick consistency to a clear yellow, beautiful wax. And then just take it off. So if you don't have a thermometer, once it's gone clear, that's the time to take your pitcher out of the water. 
for me, it's going to beep at me when it's ready. And you'll hear that in my big old microphone right here. <laughs> That's what this is. It's my mic. Um, so I started my company about five years ago in my kitchen. I was just making, like I said, candles for friends and family. I had been doing a lot of research on cleaner products and like what we were bringing into our home and what was important to get out of our home, anything that was filled with toxins. A lot of that, um, came, uh, stemmed from the fact that my daughter was born with a cleft lip and palate. And so I just started researching a lot of things. Like we got real crunchy. She was like a cloth diaper baby. And, um, I cleaned out a lot of like our detergents. Um, but one of the things as I was, I was reading this like clean blog one day and was reading all about candles as I had like probably seven burning, um, and just reading about the toxins that you can find in some candles, specifically ones that are made with paraffin. Paraffin is a derivative of petroleum. They literally just scrape the crud off of the bottom of petroleum drums, bleach it white and create a wax. And that's paraffin. So I wanted to make candles with a cleaner burning wax. So a vegetable based soy, you can also use beeswax. Beeswax isn't vegan. So if that's important to you, you won't want to use that. And then there's also some other really dreamy ones out there. Um, like coconut wax is really beautiful and clean burning as well. So you can definitely experiment with a lot of those waxes and you can find them all over the internet. Um, when I first started, I literally just hit Amazon and like added to cart until I hit a hundred dollars and started making candles. Um, okay. So our wax is melting. That's what that sound is. It's actually spinning it for me. When you make them at home on your big pot, you can just use a stirring stick, um, and kind of move your wax around and that will help it go a little bit quicker. If you're, if you're in a hurry, if you're trying to make a lot of them at once, um, or you can just kind of let it melt and put your podcast on and pour your cup of coffee and just enjoy it like a fun therapeutic project. So back to my story, I was making candles for friends and family. Um, and there was this cute little boutique here in town that was like, you should try selling your candles. And I was like, no, nope. no, no, no. That would be, I don't want to do that. Like if I hand you a candle and you're not into it, I'll never know. But to actually ask somebody to spend money on my candles felt really vulnerable. So vulnerable that like when I finally did actually decide to do it, because of course I did. We, we know now that I sell candles <laughs> for a living, um, that I like made an Instagram and completely separated it from my own personal Instagram. Cause I was like, I'm just going to dip my toes in this and see how this goes. And if, uh, it doesn't work, I'll just delete this. And it's like, it never happened. Um, but I, I brought my very first batch of candles. And I think it took me like a week, right. To make 12 candles for the store. I brought them in and they sold out in like a week, which I know just 12 candles, but still I was like, Oh, Oh, people want these. And so I, they paid me my money for selling candles in the store. Um, and I invested that back in, I bought more supplies, more wax, some new oils. I tried some different things. Um, and then I brought them back 20 the next time. And that's basically how I built my business very, very slow with a hundred dollars to start. And I really never, uh, I never put any more money into my business. It took me a little while before I could actually pay myself, um, from this business. It was definitely a side hustle. Um, in the truest sense. But, um, just a year ago, um, wax buffalo became my full-time gig. And then we have 10 people that work in our studio, 10 lovely people. Um, there's a, there's just two of us that basically work full-time and then everybody else works what we call, they work differently. And so, um, we put in our hours as we can on the projects that we can. Um, some people come in early morning and pour a cup of coffee and start pouring candles. Others work late at night. Others take projects home. Um, some of us have families, um, other jobs, graduate work, adventures. And so we really tuck into the concept of just working differently within our studio space. And it really has become such a magical place, I think, because of that. Um, okay. So our wax is melted and now it's at about 170 degrees. I'm going to let it sit. You really want to let your wax sit till about 160, 150 before you put your oils in just because you don't want them to evaporate out. So the wax is pretty hot right now and adding oils in, you'd lose some of that fragrance, which is just, it's not like a bad thing. It's just kind of a loss of money. So to be strategic, we just want to let it sit for maybe about five minutes when you're just making one candle like this to get down. Uh, and then we'll add some oil. So let's talk about what we want to make today. Uh, we did this last night and we made a uh, peppermint and eucalyptus candle. We made one that was like currant and absinthe and black pepper. 
Um, what else did we make? Oh, we made a, a really good one that smelled basically like the beach, almost like when you were a kid, you know, when you wore all the sunblock and you would go to the beach. Um, so today I thought we would do something kind of fruity to start. I'm going to add, I have a little beaker here and when you're using fragrance oil for one candle, you can get away with using anywhere between five to 10 milliliters of oil based on how strong you want that candle to be. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Also, uh, John, who I am married to, set me up with a, a new setup so that I can actually read the comments because yesterday I had to keep like shoving my face like super <laughs> the, the computer so I could read stuff. So today I, I won't be all up in your grill. Okay, so we've got a little bit. I put some mandarin, um, some sweet orange, and then I was going to add some essential oils just because I can, and I think that's fun. So I thought I would add some lemon. Um, I'm using essential oils from Whole Foods, uh, which is what we use in our candle pouring classes. We have both essential oils and um, a bunch of high-end fragrance oils. And so when we do parties at Wax Buffalo, we teach people how to mix both fragrance oils and essential oils, or you can make a full essential oil candle. The big thing with essential oils is that you just have to use more if you want a stronger smelling candle. Um, but I mean, it is such an easy thing to do at home because almost all of us have essential oils at this point, right? It's super hot. And so um, when I first started making candles, that's actually what I used. I just like cleaned out my cupboard of all my essential oils that I diffuse and started throwing them in wax, <laughs> which was really fun. Okay, so I also just added some grapefruit um, I just want to make a really, really bright, happy candle. I love burning like oranges and lemons and bright things like that in the kitchen in the morning. So I'm making my morning candle. What do we think about a little tangerine too? I'm clearly just picking all the yellow. This is like lemon is super renewing. Tangerine is super like cheerful. Um, and then grapefruit of course is just like bright and awakening. This is all really good for the kitchen. You're drinking your coffee. So there is our little mixture of oil. That um, that tangerine oil was like super bright yellow. So it made kind of a yellow oil, which I think is super pretty. Okay. And we're putting it in. I feel like the candles we made last night, I already wrote uh, one of the girls that works at Wax Buffalo. Um, and she was basically my first hire when I finally moved in and was like, okay, I need somebody to help me like on a regular basis with like all the stuff I'm bad at. And her name's Nicole and we call her the boss because she knows like she's super organized. She knows like what's going on at Wax Buffalo, what our dates are. She actually works with all of our wholesale accounts and she's wonderful. Uh, but I was telling the boss last night that I came up with so many new creations for us to make and then I might have to change out the summer line a little bit or maybe we'll do like an exclusive summer scent from our time in quarantine, right? <laughs> oh, so Jen is asking if there are any scents that are just known for not going together when thinking of mixing your own scents. That's such a great question and things that we have figured out in our pouring room. Um, one of the things that I think is an interesting scent uh, that I love, but that does not necessarily always blend well is rosemary interesting, right? Because rosemary is so classic and beautiful, but I feel like if you stick rosemary in like with a citrus, it can, it can smell a little, um, for lack of a better word, vomity <laughs> or, um, uh, cedar wood. I sometimes feel like can put an edge on something. If you're like, if you go too sweet and then add cedar wood, it just like has like a weird, um, like kind of edge to it. I, I use the word edge twice, but, um, those are two that I'm super careful with. So I usually will tend to put like oils with like oils and a really easy hack for that when you're new to candle pouring and like scent blending and honestly whole foods does a good job of doing this is you can as you can see they color their oils with like so this is eucalyptus this is lemongrass um with different colors and if you kind of go to the store and pick like like colors so like everything in the yellow family or everything in the green family, you're pretty safe. When you start to mix, you can do some really fun things. Like for instance, like um, a lemon eucalyptus candle is awesome. It's bright and it's kind of like jarring in a beautiful way. Um, but that's when you can kind of start to like figure those things out after you are like, okay, now I know that all the green scents go together, all the yellow scents go together. Um, like bergamot is a really good one to add to anything citrusy if you want like a little bit more of an earthy 
element in your citrus, but it's also bright and lovely. Um, so great question. I hope that helped answer. And just think too, like um, one of the things I did when I first started making candles was I would like look at things I loved, like for instance, like a body lotion that I loved. And I would look at all of the scents that they had put in there and think through like, oh, okay, so they're all kind of in the citrus family, or they're all kind of in, like I had an avocado lotion that I really loved, but in there they had put a little bit of rose and a little bit of lavender and a little vanilla, which I thought was magical. And so then I would go back and see if I could replicate scents that I loved in my real life, if that helps. Like for instance, adding vanilla to anything adds a little sweetness. Adding amber adds like a little bit of like a sexy note, those kind of things. Okay, so we have put our oil in. And now we're going to stir. So what you want to do is stir about 40 times or at least for a minute slowly. And what you're trying to do is make sure that those oils are really emulsifying with your wax. So you're just making sure that they're properly blended. You don't want to stir it too quickly um, because you'll add air to your wax. You could kind of think of it like a meringue or like a whipping cream. In those instances, you want to add air and that's what makes them fluffy and bright, but in candles, you don't. And the reason is, is that sometimes it can add little air pockets to your candle and it'll add like droppage or um, I actually brought an example, like a, like a pinhole like this. I don't know if you can see you can kind of see there's if it has like little pinholes it could be that you just stirred too quickly and that's what adds that air and drops it um, it can also be that you poured your wax too hot we at wax buffalo really love to pour our candles pretty close to body temperature so right around 100 degrees just because it makes it such an easier pour you can pour um much hotter than that and it's not going to mess up your candle necessarily it just sometimes doesn't give you the most even looking top so if you're making candles for a gift, you might want to let it cool a little bit more. If you're making it for yourself, um, a candle is going to burn just as well with little pock marks. <laughs> it just doesn't look as profesh, right? And an interesting thing to note is with each type of wax, even within the soy wax family, there's all kinds of different soy waxes and they're processed differently. So they all have different temperatures of like melting points and cooling points and pouring points when you wanna add the oils, the amount of oils you should put in those waxes. So if you source a wax, um, do a little Googling and just try and figure out like what the manufacturer recommends and usually that's pretty spot on. Oh, this is my favorite part, just stirring wax. I feel like it's super therapeutic. This is what we all do in the studio. We just stand around and stir wax and then talk to each other and check in on how everybody's doing. We all actually come into Wax Buffalo basically as candle pourers and then kind of mush out into a different role. So obviously like that's all I did to start. And I always think uh, it's such an interesting thing in small biz land, right? Where you are like good at one thing. So you're like, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start doing this. And then you're like, as your business grows, the thing that you were the best at is the thing you start to do the least. And you start doing all these other things that you're not good at, like trying to do accounting or <laughs> I, I was like really bad at invoicing. Usually I still am. That's why I'm not in charge of it. Like I would just forget or, um, yeah, I would procrastinate and then I would like send like nine out right before their next order. Or so trying to find people that were really good at those things and enjoyed that. Um, like Nicole, uh, was like one of a, the biggest game changers for me in growing my business. I actually have started a couple of businesses. I um, started a production company with my husband and we uh, still do that. We just do kind of small, not-for-profit documentary type work. Um, that's our side hustle. Um, but I, I used to run a children's theater here in town and it was so fun. And we like built it up as a team and I had like a whole team. We had choreographers and musicians and it was really fun. Lots of like parent volunteers making beautiful costumes. But I got to a point where I kind of got overwhelmed with how, with all of the elements within the theater that were not my strengths, right? And I just shut it down. <laughs> and um, there was a point with Wax Buffalo that I, I was there and I realized that like my next step was I was ready to just shut it down but uh, basically gave myself like a crossroad and said, okay, I either shut this down or I try and trust somebody to come into my world and do this with me. And so the very first person I ever hired, her name was Katie Campbell and she's wonderful. I just adore her. She moved to Omaha. And so that's why um, she had to stop working with us, but I still feel like she's just part of our soul. But she came in and I remember she was like, 
everything she would do, she would say, this is what I'm going to do. You feel good about it? I'd be like, okay, yeah. And after about six months of her pouring candles in my kitchen, because we were still in the kitchen. So she'd come in and the kids would hug her and she'd pet the bulldogs and she'd start to work. Um, it was one of the most glorious, like glorious experiences ever to release some of that, like, I guess to release a piece of your company to somebody and then watch them help you build it and build it together and become a team. And she was really the impetus in the next hire too, where I was like, okay, I, I think I can hire someone else. And then it started to grow. We've grown very, very slowly. And each person that we add to our team, we do it pretty strategically. And um, a lot of times the people that are added to our teams are people that have just been volunteering with us for a while. We really love working with them. It's, it's a beautiful relationship and we're like, hey, we'd love to start paying you monies now. Not a lot of monies, but some monies. Come on, and then we'll give you some responsibility. And that's how we've really grown our team. Um, yeah, okay. So we uh, have the oils in. It smells amazing. It smells kind of like a, like a mimosa. I don't know if it's that bright mandarin that we put in there. It smells awesome. We can come up with a fun name. Like a, this would be very fun, like a, like a summer mimosa scent. Everybody loves mimosas. Okay, so we're gonna pour into our Classic X. So this branding came out of some traveling I was doing before I started Wax Buffalo. I was doing some production in Switzerland. It was actually France, Italy, Switzerland, Germany. It was, it was a great trip. But all of their, uh, like, basically their apothecaries or their like drugstores are beautiful. And I even remember, I still have the bottle. I bought a bottle of ibuprofen in Switzerland and it came in an amber jar with a little Swiss cross and it said ibuprofen. It was beautiful. I was like, oh my goodness. If all of our drugstores looked like this, that it would just be the dreamiest experience to, you know, go grab a thing of Tylenol. So when I came back, I think that was one of the biggest inspirations in wanting to have these beautiful amber jars. I wanted to have this very apothecary look. Our house is pretty modern and I like super minimalistic elements. And so that is where the branding came from. I'm going to wick it with a paper core wick. We have lots of different wicks and I can talk you through some of them. I brought some different jars today to show you. Um, some of them are braided mm. cotton. Some of them are... Um, just core, like paper core with a cotton surrounding. There's all kinds of different wicks that you can purchase for your candles. And one of the reasons that you want to choose different wicks all has to do with the way that they burn evenly within your jar. So you'll have to measure your jar and figure out your wick size. And there's all kinds of great tutorials on how to do that. Um, and then secondly, each wick has a different way that they throw your candle and throw is the way that you, the scent that you smell in your candle. There's a cold throw and there's a hot throw. Cold throw is what you smell when you just have a regular candle, you pick it up at the store and you smell it. That's their cold throw. When you light your candle, the hot throw is what you smell in your home. So when you're, you have a candle burning in your kitchen and you walk upstairs and you're like, wow, it smells really good. That means it's throwing all the way up your stairs. That's a good candle. If you like strong scents like me. So we're going to wick this. We've done lots of tests and this is our favorite wick for our nine ounce jar which is just our classic size. And again, on sale because of Renegade, we have a great sale going on on the website. And there's a code at the top of the website. If you click through to do a little shopping today, um, your entire purchase is on sale if you use that code. So look for that if you're on the site. Okay. We uh, at Wax Buffalo don't use thermometers. And the whole reason that we don't do that was because I was very cheap when I started my company. Um, thermometer. I just felt like thermometers were expensive. And remember, I just put a hundred dollars in and I didn't want to put any more. I was just trying to grow it. Um, a little about that is that I told you, we have a production company and we do docu work. Well, we were both my husband and I doing documentary work and our documentary dried up. And so right when my daughter was born and we had just bought our first house, um, neither of us had work. And so honestly, I, uh, have a lot of brain energy and I, I wanted to like be doing things. And so making candles was really fun for me, but I, it was something I couldn't invest a lot of money in obviously. And so that is why I was being very cheap about it. So I didn't use thermometers. I basically figured out that if I could touch the wax with my hand after obviously letting it cool for a while, I could figure out the best pouring, uh, temperature. And I, we all like to pour it. Like I said, kind of at like uh, body temperature. So right around hundred degrees. 
And the way that you can feel body temperature, there's like a, a really cool trend going on right now in quarantine. Everybody's baking sourdough bread, right? Well, when you add water to sourdough bread, you have to add the water at body temperature to get that perfect uh, sourdough consistency. And the way I was taught to do that is you let the water run and you stick your fingers under the water. And then you just let the water run over your hands until you like basically can't feel it anymore. And that is body temperature. So you go up to warm, go down to cool until you all of a sudden are like, oh, I'm not feeling anymore. It just feels like me. And that's kind of what we do here. You can pour it a little bit more. You can pour it hotter than body temperature. It's not going to hurt it. But like I said, that's the way we find to get the glassiest, most beautiful candle on the first pour. And when you're pouring like 300 candles a day, you don't want to have to go back and clean 300 candles. It's just time. And so if we can figure out how to do it on the first pour, that was something that was really important to me, uh, especially when I was doing everything in my kitchen. I was like, I don't have time to make more candles. This is all I can make. Are we ready? This is my favorite part. Okay. Our mimosa candle. Here we go. Oh, it's so beautiful. When we do these in our pouring classes, I almost always get the question, do you need to tip it like a beer? Which I just think is the most darling question. And no, you do not. It also makes me think that the people that ask that, like, I think we could be friends. Because if you know how to pour a good beer, we're probably going to be very good friends. We at Wax Buffalo use these cute little wick, wick holders. So we're so bougie. They just look like this. And there's like a little lip on them. See, and you can th stick your wick in there. You can shove it in there. Uh, we didn't even add these to our DIY kits because there's so many ways that you can hold a wick center in your jar. And we were trying to make our kits as affordable as possible. So not adding in any elements that would jack the price up. So I bet, right? I, I think I should start making mimosa candles. <laughs> Maybe in like, uh, actually, wouldn't they be so pretty in these? So then you could like have a mimosa candle and then drink a mimosa out of our jars. Um, I, mean, I think we're going to have to do it. So, so one of the ways that you can hold a wick at home is to just use a clothespin. If you have a clothespin, you just set it on and you stick the wick on top. I usually I have clothespins in here. Let me see if I call. Yes, I do. So you would basically just um, stick it right through the center so that it holds like that, if that makes sense. Um, the other way that you could do it is you can take two pens and stick it on either side of the wick. You just, I like pens because they have caps or like um, pencils that have like the ridges on them and you just set them on either side of the wick. Honestly, when I first started the company, I think until I was making about 50 candles a night, I was totally using just all the pens in our house to hold the wicks in place. And you just kind of watch it and make sure that it doesn't push your pen off. Um, but it's a great way to do it. And it's an easy hack where you're not having to spend money on anything not needed. Um, I'm super happy with this candle. It turned out great. So we're going to move on. Um, one of the things that we get asked a lot at Wax Buffalo is how uh, to make melts out of your leftover wax in your candles. So one thing I did want to talk about and why you always have wax left at the bottom of your Wax Buffalo candle and most candles should be this way is that you just um you don't want to you don't want an open flame at the bottom of a glass jar just going um <laughs> going all helter skelter you you want a little bit of that buffer and so we actually wick our jars in a way that makes sure that you'll have at least a fourth of an inch to even just even like a half an inch of wax at the bottom of your jar and it just is for your safety um it, it makes our hearts feel better that you know you're not going to have super hot glass on a table you will always still get your 45 to 50 hour burn out of your candle. And if you don't, then you might have a wonky wick and we'll replace it. But um, we, you definitely get your full burn time, but that's why you always have a little wax left over. Now, I think there are really fun ways that you can um, make that wax work for you. You can always put your candle on a wax melter, you know, just like those little things that you can set them on um, and it'll still throw really great fragrance for a long time. You can also clean out your jar and plant little succulents, or um, I know a lot of people, which I think is super cute, put like their cotton balls and Q-tips in their jars, and they just use them as like really pretty vessels. Obviously our whiskey tumblers are made to be cleaned out and then used in the kitchen, and you can drink out of them, juice, whiskey, water. I'm currently drinking water out of mine. And then we're gonna make one today in the whiskey tumbler. But another fun thing you can do if you have um, those wax melters, like I used to always have one in the bathroom that plugged in, um, you can make little tiny melts. So out of the bottom of your candle wax, it's a great way to use that. Another thing too um, that's pretty cool is if you don't want to clean out your jar, um, 
because it's soy wax, it's not going to hurt to plant anything on top of it. You could add a little bit of gravel, a little bit of soil, pop a succulent in there if you feel like not even cleaning it out and it'll do just fine. But if you want to clean it out, I thought I would show you how to do it today. So I have a little um, hot plate here. I think you can see it kind of on the side here. Oh, Beth, great question. She's asking if I don't have a candle melter or a warmer, what can I do with my melts? I love that question. So some of the, oh, someone just goes a little Guys, I have a bulldog and she's very mad right now. <laughs> which she never gets mad. She's so old and the only people she gets mad at are the mailman, which is, that must mean that the mailman's here. You're okay, Gabby? Was it a delivery? Yeah, okay. I actually really like it about her. When we got bulldogs, I, um, sorry, Beth, I'll get back to your question. When uh, we got bulldogs, I loved the fact that they're actually like big old gentle giants, but they seem scary. And um, I just makes me feel safer when I'm home by myself. Um, unless you're a creepy person, they are very scary and she'll eat you. Okay. So Beth, one of the things I like doing with the melts, if you don't have a melter or a warmer, um, you can actually, if you have like an old junky pot or even like a soup can, you could drop that melt in there and then just warm it on your stove. Uh, if that makes sense, it's like you're making your own melter. You could also do that with a jar if you don't want to clean it out. Another thing that I've heard that people do, and I think this is really cute, is to pour it into like an old tin or a little jar and then stick it in your closet, like back behind your clothes, and it'll make your clothes smell really good. But you just have like a piece of wax. Again, you could just stick the jar back there. But if you want to reuse your jar or you want to make a candle in it and you just want to get the wax out, um, those are some fun ways to use it. I also know of people that put them, uh, you can make a melt. Um, and then you put it in like a little tin and slide it under your car. I know people that put them in soup cans and put them in the cup holders in the car. So you would only have about this much wax in there. Um, so that way, if it got really hot in your car and it gushed around, it wasn't going to gush around in your car. That's such a great way to make your car smell amazing. And my favorite one to put in my car is grapefruit or blood orange. Um, it's like you open up your car and it just smells like a citrus grove as you get in there. I bet coffee would be good to put in your car too. Everybody loves coffee. Okay, so we're going to turn on our warmer. I have a little um, pan set here. And we're just going to put some water in there. Oh, let's see. My warmer's not turning. There we go. Are you on? Yeah, okay. And I, this is honestly what I would suggest using at home too when you're making candles. It's just like a Pyrex like this. Uh, when you're just making like one or two candles, it's not going to hurt your equipment. I destroyed all of our kitchen gear because I was making like a hundred candles a night and it starts to boil over and wax was like boiling in pots, uh, mostly because I was going too fast. And Oh, Beth, adding melts to your sock drawer is a brilliant idea. I'm going to add that to my list. <laughs> I love that idea. Okay. So I'm going to pour a little bit of water into my pan. Shoop, shoop, shoop. And I'm just essentially creating a double boiler, right? So you can do this on your stove. I just didn't want to do it with my back to you. So here's my little makeshift. I also thought that I will melt down this. I mean, why not? This is um, a vessel that we did in a collaboration with Earth and Joy. She made five different colors. And then we made these super beautiful essential oil blends. And I thought maybe if I talked about it on here, we could all rally and get her to make more of these and do it again. Because I love them. She did this color. She did a light teal, a white, a pink like a blushy pink and then um, a black. They're gorgeous. And I want to pour another candle in this. So I'm going to melt this one down today. So I'm just putting it, you can see here in my little pan, I can move this forward so you can see it a little bit better. Move my mic back just a tiny bit. So there we go. And we're just going to kind of let that set and warm. And, I'll, and, and when you do this, understand that your vessel is going to get warm. So have a little oven mitt ready. Just get like a, a basic one that you're okay with getting a little wax on because you might when you're like picking it up and pouring it. And then the other thing that you're going to want to have ready is I'm going to make my melts in a little silicone mold. These are this what we have put our whiskey rocks in. So I'm just going to pour it in here and then we're going to let it cool and then we can pop them out later and you'll have the cutest little melts to put in a warmer or your sock drawer like Beth or your car like my friend Jill. So many options. So that's going to warm. And we'll come back to that, but I think we should make another candle and I think it's time to make one in a whiskey tumbler. So um, I'm gonna pour some flakies in. Our whiskey tumblers are a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm gonna put 
four cups of wax in. This thing does not hold four cups when you first put it in. So I'm going to put in three and then I'll come back to it as it's melting and we'll add a little bit more. Perfect. I'm trying to decide what we should put in our whiskey tumbler. Um, last night we made this really fun absinthe candle. So maybe that would be a really fun one. I think um, it would be fun to do like a mimosa and an absinthe and like a whiskey and whiskey tumblers, right? And then just name them all something really cute. I'm drinking coffee way too late. I'm going to pay for this tonight. I cannot drink coffee past noon, but I'm doing it because I wanted to be on task for you today. Okay, let's start mixing our walls. So I think I'll do, I've got my beaker again. I think I'm going to add this really fun um, absinthe that we sourced. And then, of course, you know I want to add some essentials. So what should we add to absinthe today? Like a, should we do like a citrusy absinthe or like a, I wonder if a pepperminty absinthe would be good. It would be like, obviously absinthe has kind of those like licorice notes, those like, um, I wish I had like a coriander. Oh, you know what? I have Palo. Let's add a little Palo Santo to it. Absinthe and Palo Santo. Oh my gosh. I can't even. Okay. Palo Santo is very expensive, so I'm not going to add too much, but I think it's going to give it a very earthy. Yeah, that smells really good. I like that. Okay, so we've got a little palo and maybe a little black pepper. Black pepper is stimulating. So if we're going for a boozy drink and then a little palo, which is like so calming, let's just throw it completely off with stimulating black pepper, right? But I think it will give it like a spicy element. Okay, so we're melting the wax. We've got our oil set. We've got our melt starting. Starting to look nice and warm over here. Maybe I'll tell you a little bit about um, <laughs> my mom. It's, it's a good point, mom. She said that drinking wine will take care of that. It's, it's, it's a good point. <laughs> so I'll just drink all the coffee and then switch. Isn't that the quarantine like beverage schedule right now? Coffee till wine. Oh, how are you all doing in quarantine, by the way? How's it going? Social distancing. We, um, we actually created an episode called, or sorry, a, like an episodic TV show called Distance. Um, so each week I jump on with a different creative or artist here in America that I've fallen in love with and become friends with via the socials. And we talk via Zoom uh, a little bit about just like what they're doing, who they are, how they're keeping their hands busy during this time. Most of them are doing some really incredible work, not only like within their own like artistry, but then giving back to their communities or creating like really cool programs um, during this time. It's just, it's like, it's really good for my heart. Um, and it's been really good to just see like how people are pivoting and um, what they're doing to help their community. And so those go up every Sunday night. And then while I talk to them, I also create a candle, basically like we're doing here on the live. Um, they tell me about memories that they have or scents that they love. And we mix up a candle. We usually pour it in like a very cool vessel. We've done some really cool ones. Like for instance, like we have like this one coming up soon. Um, this next episode coming up. On Sunday, I actually talked to Allie Rash, that's an incredible artist here in town, and she hand painted jars for us that are gorgeous. And so we poured some really good, um, beautiful soy wax. I won't give away the scent, but those will go up on Sunday. And then we always sell them on Sunday night, and all the proceeds from those sales go to the Lincoln Food Bank. So um, it's kind of fun. So if you're joining us on the YouTubes and you want to see one of those, you can always subscribe or just know that they're up on Sunday nights and we throw them up here on YouTube, but then we also throw them up in Instagram TV because that's where the world is right now, right? On the whole IGTVs. Okay. So this is starting to melt, which is great. And you do want to keep it really low. Definitely. You don't want like a roaring boil or anything. You just want like a nice, low, warm, um, soy wax has a very low melting point. And so it's very easy to get it to melt quickly, um, without having to get it too hot. Okay. Well, thanks, Beth. It's been like a, it, the show I honestly think is very selfish because, uh, it's, it's a little bit, you know, like it's, it's a little bit sad to stay in your home. I feel like I don't get to see my friends. And so it's like a really beautiful way to get to like make something with my hands, um, talk to people I love and then do a little good for our community. 
it's been fun. It's been really fun. And we've created some really beautiful smelling and beautiful looking candles that I think we'll all have to come back. I might need to do like a giveaway, like a big giveaway, like one of every distance candle. It's actually a really good idea. I might do it. Okay. Our wax is melting. So we're getting there with that. Our melt is melting. Um, so one of the things at Wax Buffalo that is, I think, kind of fun is all of our candles really come from um, stories from our past or adventures that we've been on. Uh, when it started, it was obviously just all my stories. But now that we have a big team, I feel like some of the candles now nod to adventures and stories from all of us on the team. One of my favorite ones is Armitage Street. It's the very first candle um, that, that I put in our line as like a classic scent. The first one I ever poured was cinnamon, and cinnamon was... Um, my grandma Fern's favorite scent. And so I poured a lot of cinnamon candles in the beginning um, because I honestly, I, I started Wax Buffalo just after she passed away as a very therapeutic thing to kind of bring back in. I was pouring candles already after my daughter was born just for our family. Um, but really, I think the business took off after grandma left. So Cinnamon was the first candle I bought, but Armitage was the first one I put in my line. And Armitage is like blackberry, vanilla, clove. It's very like warm and sweet, um, but not too sweet. It's pretty beautiful. It's one of our best sellers. And I actually wear it a lot too. And the reason it's called Armitage Street is that I used to live in Chicago. So um, when I, I went to school in Chicago, I met my husband in Chicago. We got married in Chicago and we lived on Armitage Street. We actually got married on Armitage Street. We got married in this cute little park um on the street that we lived so we like we lived right here we got married like five blocks this way and then we got married and the whole wedding party and everyone that attended the wedding walked down the street past our house to this darling little coffee shop and hookah bar and that's where we had our reception so Armitage is really special to me and then that is where we lived the first like year and a half after we were married I always wanted to live above a store. It was like a dream of mine to live in the city above a store. And on Armitage Street, it's covered in like, it's Kiehl's and um, Lush Cosmetics, uh, tons of restaurants, tons of really cute stores. So we lived above this store called Artifacts, but across the street was Lush Cosmetics and then Kiehl's and then Starbucks was right in this corner. And then we actually like, could look out our front window at a chocolatier called Vosges. So it was a chocolate shop and they put like, the coolest stuff in their chocolates. So when I would walk out my front door or I would open my window, Armitage Street smelled like Lush and Kiehl's and Starbucks. It smelled amazing. All of Chicago doesn't really smell amazing, but my street did. And so to me, Armitage Street basically just takes me back to like that like newlywed happiness living in the city. And like um, we had my brother actually lived there too and lived across the street with like some of our closest friends. So we would like go back and forth and like, do dinner at his place. Then he would come in and do dinner at ours. Or we would just go downstairs and eat wings and drink beer below our house. It was the most magical place. And so Armitage is definitely a place that I, or a candle I created to go back to my like happy place. But I always hope that that Armitage sends you back to your happy place or whatever that Armitage is to you in your life. And so that's how most of our candles have come about. I just think that smell is such a like, uh, a strong strong memory connector there isn't much that that takes you back in the same way that smells you get like hit in the face with like a scent of coffee and it takes you to a very specific place um and so most of our candles are created that way we have one called into the woods that we created after our family um spent several weeks traveling the west coast and then we actually like pretended to live in portland for about six weeks we all smushed into a one-bedroom airbnb and just lived there um uh and worked remotely. It was, it was amazing. And then we would go on adventures. We would go to the sea and we would go like into the woods. And so into the woods was created because I just missed that like really earthy woodsy smell of like, uh, the Northwest or I mean, sorry, North, uh, yeah, Northwest, the Pacific Northwest. And, um, so that candle always takes us back there and it's very dreamy. You can get that in our normal classic line. Um, but we've also put them in our whiskey tumblers too. And of course, again, on waxbuffalo.com, everything is on sale. I should talk you through what I'm doing. Um, so if you pop through to the website and shop today, thanks to Renegade, we have a sale going on. Um, and you'll find the code at the top of our website. And you can use that code for 15% off the entire site, including our DIY kits, which is kind of what we're doing here today. Creating candles. You can do this at home. Um, there's lots of great instructions in our DIY kits, but you can also come back to our YouTube channel and watch these and make candles together. And I'll kind of talk you through how to do it. So 
Okay, so Cassie's asking, how many candles do we have in our classic line? And can you get those all the time? That is a great question. So we have eight in our classic line. And yes, those are the ones that we have available all the time. Um, in our classic line, we have Blood Orange, Armitage Street, Rosemary Mint, Sweet Tobacco, Red Fern, Verona, Into the Woods. And I'm missing one. Did I say Blood Orange? Blood Orange. Um, so those are all of our classic scents and they're always available. Um, and then we do seasonal scents. So we do a spring line, a summer line, a fall line, and a Christmas line. Right now in our spring line, we have four scents. They're beautiful. Willow tree, which is very lilac-y and fresh. We have one called hummingbird that's citrusy and sweet. Um, it's really fun. We also have a lavender candle for the first time in our collection. That's our spring collection. And then an avocado. We did an avocado candle and it is dreamy. Really good for the kitchen. It just is like, like, nourishing and warm and clean smelling. Those are all online right now. We're actually at the very end of our spring season. So we only have a few left of most of those scents and then we'll be releasing the summer scent sometime next month. Oh, okay. So I've created, I've got our oil ready. Our wax is melted. It's been melted to 170 degrees and I would like it to get down to about 150 before I put my oil in. So we don't have any evaporation. Um, so we get the strongest smelling candles possible. But good news, my wax has melted in my tiny little vessel here. So I'm going to make a melt while we're sitting here waiting for our wax to cool. Hi, Katie. When you're done burning the whiskey tumbler, what is the best way to clean out that last little bit of wax? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. It's kind of what we're doing right now. So my favorite way to do it is on the stove. There's a couple different ways. You can throw that thing in the freezer and let it harden and it will actually, um, it will force the wax to kind of condense and it'll take it from the side and then you can just chip it out like with a butter knife or like a wooden stick like this. You just kind of break up the wax and basically pour it out and then you just pry the wick up. I like to do them on the stove because I usually just have one going and it also makes your house smell amazing when you're double boiling your old candles. So right now I have one on a, um, is this hot to move? Okay. A little wax melter. I would usually do it on the stove right back here. I didn't want to do it with my booty buns to you. So you basically just put a pot and some water in it. And then you just do a very low warm water and you set your candle in there, which is what I've done until the wax melts. And um, if you want to create, you can, you don't have to reuse your wax. You can always just throw the wax away. Uh, if you're just wanting to use your vessel for a delicious drinking vessel, like our whiskey tumblers, like these, um, but if you want to save the wax, you can also pour them in just like a silicone mold like this, which works perfect. You pour it in and then you can just pop it out like a melt. You can use that in a melter. Um, Beth had the great idea to like put it in a sock drawer to make your sock smell good. I like to shove it in like the back of my closet so my coats smell pretty. Um, you definitely want to use an oven mitt when you're pulling out your candle because the vessel does get hot since it's been sitting in that hot water. In fact, I might need, I'm so bad with oven mitts. I'm going to get a little um, washcloth so I can Okay, so I can hold the vessel because it is hot and my oven mitt's gonna be in the way of me trying to pour it. Okay, so here's my little vessel. My wax is melted and I'm literally just going to pour it in to the silicone mold. You don't have a ton. So like we're using these big old ones that I use for like whiskey rocks. I don't care that there's like a little bit of like wick sediment in mine. There's going to be like a little bit of those like little teeny pieces you get from the wick when it flicks off. I'm just going to use this. But if you were going to do these as a gift, um, one of the ways that you can get that out is to just pour it through like a sieve like this, or like um, get those little bits out. And then you see, you can see it's like completely empty. And then I have the, <laughs> you can't see because my huge oven mitt. <laughs> but it, trust me, it's completely empty um, except for the wick on the bottom. And you can use like a little butter knife to get that wick off, or you can use like a little paint stick like we have. And it's best to do it when it's warm. Um, we just use like a little sticker on our wicks. So they get really sticky, but if they're warm, they pop off pretty easy. Pop, pop, pop. There's my wick, ta-da. So I'll throw that away. And now this vessel is ready for me to pour another candle in. I actually know people that will basically, this is a really fun thing to do. You, um, you can melt down all your old wax bits. If you have like a candle graveyard like me, I never throw away my jars. Um, okay. Oh yeah. So I, I melted down this vessel. This was made by earth and joy. We did these 
two Mother's Days ago, she made us all these gorgeous vessels. And then we did um, custom essential oil blends in all of them. And there were five different colors. And so I'm going to re-pour into this candle because I just want it again. But one of the things that I'll do is you can basically, so pour all your wax into one empty jar and then you can melt it down again, put a wick in another jar and you basically can make a brand new candle. We make those at the studio uh, after we do our pouring classes, we call them the studio because uh, we never want to waste wax. And so you actually just layer your candle with old wax from other candles and it ends up smelling just like you're walking into a candle shop. So it's a really great hack to go ahead and just like make another candle. We should like put um, wicks up on our website so you can just at least get a wick and then you can re-pour your 19 jars into one, make a candle. And then we have, uh, you can bring all of your jars back into our um, studio and we always reimburse you for them and take a little money off of your purchase when you do that. Um, I'm going to keep this going. I have it really low. I just have it on warm. So my water's just warm and I'm going to stick another candle in. And we're going to melt that down. And we're just going to keep creating melts. I'm going to set this down here out of the way. I have so many little tables surrounding me, y'all. Because yesterday I had to like reach up into the screen and it was like so much of my face. Nobody wants to see that. Um, okay. We are ready to pour our oil into our candle. So back to our candle making that we're doing here. Um, we created this really gorgeous absinthe black pepper. Oh, and Palo Santo. That's what we put in there. It is awesome. This smells like super earthy. It smells like you would like take a drink of this and it would just be like that earthy warm in your tummy. It smells really, really good. Uh, it's like not too sweet, but there is a little tinge of sweetness to it, which I always love. So we're going to pour this in. Our wax is right about 150 degrees and that's perfect so that you won't get that evaporation happening. You won't lose any of your scent. And then we're going to wait for our wax to get down to at least 100, 100 degrees is what I like. 120 is okay if you get impatient, um, but 100 degrees ish. And that's really like body temperature will give you the best pour. Cassie, yes, we do have. Okay. So Cassie said, I saw on your site that you have Palo Santo bundles. Do you make those as well? We sure do. I'm so glad you asked. It's like, I knew someone might ask. So these are our Palo Santo bundles. And we actually have, they have little X, one of them comes with a little X and then it talks about why we love Palo Santo and why it's important to us. Um, we source our Palo Santo sticks and our Palo Santo oil from the same company. It's like a small company um, in, I think they're in New Mexico um, and they're incredible. We love them. It's, it, they're such a cute company. And you know, when you're like sourcing things on the regular, you start to become friends with those companies and um, they're really, really neat. So, but yes, those are on our website. And we make them and they come with a darling X. And we feel so excited about that. When they came in with the little X on them, we like all squealed like just dorks because, oh my gosh, everything with an X, right? <laughs> Thanks, Cassie. I love them too. I love Palo. We, um, if you don't know about Palo Santo, Palo Santo is, um, it's a natural occurring bark tree um, and you can burn it almost like you would burn an incense. So you light it up, you let it burn and then you blow it out and then there'll be like a smoke and it'll fill your air. And a lot of people do it as like a cleansing ritual. Um, I, I like to do it before yoga. It just makes your whole room smell like Palo and it's very cleansing for your air. And if you have a lot of children like me, I tend to light a Palo Santo after diaper changes. Uh, we do diaper changes up in my, my bathroom in my bedroom. And so I don't want my bedroom to smell like that. And so I always do like a little loop with the Palo or I'll be changing Maslow's diaper and John will light went up and I'll start to smell it wafted. in. It's, it's really lovely and they last a really long time. Um, it's just kind of a fun way to add scent to your home in a clean way. What is your favorite whiskey drink to drink out of the whiskey tumbler? Oh, Katie, thank you for asking. I, uh, I am a little bit of a nerd and I do love my whiskey straight. Um, I love Oban. I don't know if you, have you had Oban, Katie? It's like really peaty and earthy, um, kind of smells smoky. I got real into it. John got me into Oban. Um, my classic whiskey is I always just like, I, I love it, like bullet when I'm not going too expensive. Um, but honestly for summer, and I know it's like a whiskey tumbler, I've been super in to tequila. So I started making, um, uh, we went on a trip, the one that we went on the East coast and, um, this I went down to this hotel bartender. It was the cutest little bartender. And she was like, have you ever had tequila like with fresh orange and lime? Cause I was kind of explaining that 
in the same way that like candles can give me headaches, I can get headaches from like kind of synthetic type weird mixes. So I always drink everything pretty straight or careful. Oh yeah. Katie loves her single malt scotch. Malt scotch. I didn't know that about you. And I love it about you. We need to have a whiskey soon when all of this is over, Katie. Um, so it's tequila, fresh lime, a little agave, and then um, you can either put in fresh orange or if you want it to be even more boozy, it's contraire. Um, it's called like a Cadillac Marg, but you have to be careful ordering them from restaurants because sometimes they can be really sweet. Hers was really, really fresh. And that is like my go-to drink right now in these as we're getting into the summer. A little tequila, a little contraire, lime, agave. It's the best. That's what I like. Uh, we live by a lake. It's our backyard is a lake. And I usually make one of those. And then I go out on the paddleboard and I just sit on the paddleboard. <laughs> it's, like, it's like my escape. I'm very excited to get back in the lake again when it gets warmer. Okay, we have put our delicious oil in, our absinthe, our Palo Santo, our black pepper, and then we're gonna stir 40 times. So sorry if you've heard this spiel already, but in case you're new, um, we always stir at least 40 times or you can stir for a minute slowly. And what you're doing is you're trying to get those oils emulsified into your wax. Um, just so that you get like that really clean, uh, perfect looking wax. So it doesn't have like the swirls in it. If your oil hasn't been fully mixed in or you don't have pockets that aren't going to smell as strongly as others. So we're stirring 40 times and you're stirring slowly so that you don't get air pockets in your candle. If you stir too fast, sometimes you can add a little bit of air and you don't want to do that. Um, think of it as a meringue or like a whipping cream. You want air in those things, but you don't in a candle. And it's it's not the end of the world, but what it'll do is usually just add like an air pocket and that's what can give you like a droppage in your candle. If you ever have like that sink that happens in the middle um, or you have like little pinholes or you have little pock marks, sometimes that's just, there was like air. And so as your candle settled and cured, it shifted in that air and it, it made that little mark. Um, but while we're talking about the way that candles cool, and if you're doing this at home, another trick if you're having your candles um, pull down in the middle. So you're not getting that really pretty glassy look on the top. Sometimes you'll, it looks like it's caved in in the middle. It could be the surface that you're pouring your candles on. So if you're, if you're pouring on like a stone based countertop, they're always very cold to the touch. And that actually creates a pull in your candle. That's making it cool faster than your candle necessarily wants to. Um, when I first started making candles, I read all these blogs about how to get your candle to um, stay cozy and warm. I even read about a person that literally would take a small cardboard box and she would pour her candle and then she would wrap each uh, candle in like basically like a cloth around it to keep it cozy. So it, it had like a towel around it, like a little towel clothing. And every candle was like that. And I did actually do that for a little while and it worked perfectly. So if you're doing it at home, for sure. But as I started to grow and I was making like a hundred candles, you know, in a night, that was not sustainable. And so I tried some different things and I will share those with you. Um, so definitely realized that the stone was bad. Um, so to hack it, I would use um, cardboard, which is like nice. It, um, it's a good insulator. And so I would do two pieces of cardboard um, and I just had them lined up against my countertop and you can put your candles just straight on the cardboard if it's nice and even, and that will help it cool, um, a little bit slower than the stone, um, a big old, old beach towel or a big old bath towel. You have to be okay with it getting ruined, but like finding an old towel, that's great. I would just double it up. So it's a little more cushy and a little, has a little bit more warmth to it. And so doing all of your candles on towels is a great way to keep it so that they stay cozy. Um, or wood, if you have like an old cutting board that you're fine with ruining, or you actually have a butcher block countertop, it'll do wonderful on wood. My only hesitation with wood is that it does, it's, it's hard to clean wax out of wood. You'll see stainage. And so if you have wood, you could just put like one layer of, of a towel down and it'll do great. But if you're having that droppage, it very well could be your counter, your stone countertop. So we're waiting for our candle to get from um, 150 down now to closer to 100, which is more like body temperature. At Wax Buffalo, we actually all just feel our cans like this. We do it by look. So as it starts to get uh, a little milky in there or we touch it and it feels more like our body temperature, that's when we know it's time to pour a candle. I, um, I've told this story before, but it's basically because I was very, very cheap and did not want to buy a ton of kitchen thermometers because that would cut into my supply budget. 
so I figured out how to make candles by just touching and figured out like this is the best temperature to pour the candle. And every wax that you use has a different temperature that makes the most sense for porridge. So if you're using, there's a lot of different types of soy wax out there. Google the type of soy wax that you have, or even like talk to the manufacturer that you've you've um, purchased your wax from, and they'll always have a, a, a note on this is when you'll want to, this is the how hot you want to get it. This is when you want to add your oils and this is when you want to pour. So my step is definitely for our DIY kit, like the wax that you get from us, pouring it at your body temperature is going to give you the best candle. Um, but that might not be true if you're using a different type of wax, whether that's a different type of soy wax or beeswax or coconut. Don't use paraffin, okay? Just use a clean burning wax. Um, okay, so this is getting pretty close. And the way that you can feel uh, body temperature, if you've never done it before, it basically should just feel more like you. Um, think of it as like the trend right now where you're making sourdough bread. Um, I know, sorry, I'm repeating this. I should say if anybody's been on here longer than 30 minutes, Renegade said there will be people coming in regularly. And so to just go ahead and repeat cycles over and over, just so you don't think I'm a crazy person and can't remember that I've already told you this three times. Um, it's for the newbies. But when you are making sourdough bread, uh, when you add the water, to get the perfect sourdough consistency, you want the water to be at body temperature. And so I was taught the way to do that um, is you put your hand under a faucet and then you run the water and you go warmer and you go cooler until the water running over your fingers. Oh, good. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. You start to feel a little crazy though, after like an hour of just saying the same thing. You're like, I hope everyone knows I'm not crazy. Um, so thanks, Amanda, for saying that. So you run the water over your fingers until you just can't feel it anymore. So it's not, you're not feeling coolness. You're not feeling warmness. That's like your body temperature. And that's basically what we're looking for with the pots. Um, you want to be careful. Of course, your pot's going to be hot. So you want to wait till you know, it's been at least like 15 minutes. It's been cooling. You feel safe. And that's how you are. <laughs> Tian Zen says, can you drink the absinthe candle? Cause I'm probably going to drink the absinthe candle. Just saying, I want to be very clear Tian Zen that I got this absinthe oil. I sourced it and thought of you immediately. I was like, if this is good, he will know. I'll send you him. I would not. I mean, it's safe to drink, I think, because it's vegetable based. But man, I feel like you would feel real gross. What if you just like burn it while drinking? <laughs> oh, my gosh. OK, this is feeling body temperature to me. So we're going to pour it. Um, and we decided we're going to do a whiskey tumbler, right? So we're actually going to use a different wick for our whiskey tumbler. And the way that you wick a candle is based on the size, um, the perimeter of the candle, how deep it is, what kind of wax you're using, all of that kind of stuff. So for this, this is a bigger jar and obviously it's a different width than like, you know, our nine ounce. And so, um, we use a little bit taller wick. I still am using a paper core. Um, for this vessel, we've, we just found that it's the best for this one. Yay. 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 Um, and I'm going to wick. So when you're wicking a candle, you just want to go to the center of the jar, stick that little wick down. If you don't have little wick stickers, um, in our kits. Oh, thanks, Amanda. Yes, we do sell this. We sell this as a candle. These are our whiskey tumblers. Um, they're wonderful. I'm actually drinking my water out of one seat. <laughs> um, we sell them on the site as cups. So you can just buy them if you want to use them as beverage cups, but we also pour candles into them. So just look for whiskey tumbler on our site. And of course they're on sale right now. Thanks to renegade market. And there's a little code at the top of the website that gives you that sale code, but we have these and they're wonderful. Um, okay. So you just want to put it basically in the middle of your jar and then always press down on your wick to just make sure it's fully secured because you don't want wax to like get under there. If there was an air pocket, cause it'll pop your wick. And when it gets really hot, it can move in your vessel and we don't want that. So that's why you smush it down. If you are using a, like a small vessel and you can't get your fingers in there, just use like a, you know, a butter knife or a wooden stick and stick it down. Okay. And now we're going to pour. This is my favorite part. Our absinthe whiskey tumbler. I think we need to make these in real life. I'm having so much fun making all these crazy like concoctions. It's been good for my soul. And there it is. How beautiful. This will obviously cool to be a creamy white color, but the soy wax always melts down to kind of that yellowish hue. And then when you're using essential oils, a lot of essential oils have a color element to them, especially like citrus and stuff. And so um, you'll get kind of that yellow 
there it is. There's our candle, my friends. So this will take, um, it actually won't take too long to dry, to cure, to cool, all the ways that you can say that. Um, but then you definitely want to let your candle sit about 48 hours before you burn it, just so that it's super hard and that will give you a longer burn time. Our nine ounce candles like these have a 45 to 50 hour burn time. Um, one like this is that's more like 11 ounces. It's going to give you almost 60 hours. As you get up into those bigger candles, like our double wicks, they don't always necessarily give you double the amount of time, but they actually are specifically created to give you a bigger throw. So we always say like, if you have a big living room um, or a real big kitchen and you're throwing a party, that's when you'd want to get like those bigger candles because they'll throw really well. Okay. So now that that project is done, I think we should put some more wax in and melt it. And then we can move on to creating another melt um, with our jar here because it's almost done. It's smelling really good in here, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna drink a little more coffee and then I'm gonna go put my cup away so I don't drink any more coffee. Because I'm worried about how much coffee I'm drinking. I will never sleep. Okay. So I think the next one we'll do, I we have this really fun vessel um, that says, if you can see it, uh, work differently in swirly gold letters. Working differently is something that's really important to us at Wax Buffalo. All of our team members come in with the understanding that you are encouraged to work differently. So whether that means you're coming in at five in the morning and pouring candles with a cup of coffee, or if you prefer to work late at night, like me with a whiskey in hand, um, we don't have crazy set hours. It had to change a little bit with our retail stores. So there are definitely like there's a little bit more continuity of who's there. We so that we're, you know, we have a store that's open all the time, but for the most part, we're pretty loosey goosey. Um, a lot of us have families, kids, other jobs. This is a lot of our side hustles, adventures, graduate programs, all that kind of stuff. And so we just want it to be a very safe and beautiful environment where you don't feel like the pressure of sitting at a desk when you don't have anything to do. We come in, we get our stuff done, and then we go out and adventure. So um, we created these work differently jars specifically because it's been our mantra, but then we were like, oh my gosh, everyone's kind of having to work like us right now with the coronavirus. And it's, um, it can be very dreamy, but if it's not something that you have necessarily chosen, it can be hard. And so um, we created these jars as just kind of a encouragement to everyone's hearts. Be like, you'll get through this, just work a little differently for this time. And then it'll all be back to normal soon, we hope. Um, so our girl, Tessa, Tessa works on our team and she's a, an amazing designer and she designed these as well as a lot of other fun ones. You'll see on our website, we have these miss you kits that she designed. Um, and it has a jar that says roses are red, violets are blue. Um, thanks for staying home, but I sure miss you. They're super cute. And, um, so meant to just like send to friends, obviously that you miss. Um, and so those are on our website and of course on sale as well. And they come with a card that says miss you that she designed. That's really cute. And then we'll, we'll write any note that you want and send those out to friends. Um, it's kind of a fun little package and it's an easy way to tell people that you're missing them and who doesn't want a candle right now, right? In quarantine, candles are very important. They're not going to change the world, but they definitely make your world feel a little cozier. I don't know what it is about like burning a candle when you're at home. It just makes everything feel a little more normal, maybe. Okay, so we're gonna do another nine ouncer. This is a nine ounce jar. And so I'm gonna put in three cups of wax for nine ounce. Two, three, awesome. This thing like just lets me put in three. This little candle kit um, I've been using here at home, uh, we've been doing a YouTube series called Distance, where I talk to different artists and creators and talk about what they're doing in their world, um, how they're keeping busy. And then most of them are doing some really cool things, giving back to their community. So we talk about that. And then while we talk, I make them a candle. So they tell me the scents they love or memories that they have. And we create a custom scent, kind of like we're doing today uh, for them. I pour them a candle. And then after that, I make a whole batch of the candle that they created and we sell it on Sunday nights through distance. And all of this, the proceeds from those candles from the series go to the Lincoln food bank, um, just to help feed kiddos right now that are out of school. Um, the food, like, I feel like every local food bank right now is doing some really incredible things all across America. So that's what our candle proceeds go through for distance. And you can find that on Sunday nights here on YouTube. Um, if you subscribe, we'll just shoot it to your email and you can watch it. They're usually, they're pretty short, anywhere from eight to 20 minutes max. And um, they're pretty beautiful. And then of course, you know, you also have 
early access to the, the collab candles that we're making. We have like really cool vessels. We do stuff like this that are really different than what we usually do or um, uh, in different scents too. So the one coming up this Sunday is Allie Rash. Um, she's an artist here in Lincoln. She's incredible. And she actually hand painted vessels for us. And then we did a custom scent in them for her. And so it's a pretty small batch, but they're beautiful. So it's going to be a really fun one. Um, and she kind of talks about like her process with art. Her kids actually do some art for us. And um, she kind of encourages our hearts on like how to create art within our own home with the things that we have. You'll, it's really good one. It's really cool. Um, okay. So why this is melting, this is done melting. So I'm going to pull it out. And of course, when you're making your melts and melting down your wax in your jars, you want to make sure that you're using an oven mitt because those jars get really hot. Um, if you don't want little wick bits in there, you can throw, uh, you can pour your candles through something like this. I don't really care. I'm just making the melts for me. So I'm not worried about the wick getting in there today. Uh, but like, say if you were making these melts as like a gift, um, they're really cute. When you make little squares like this, my favorite way is to pop them out. We're going to pour it into a silicone mold pop it out and then wrap it in like a cute little tissue and put a little sticker. I was still a sticker from Navy sticker collection. And then, you know, just add it to a cute little gift. Um, they would like it would make it like cute little stocking stuffers at Christmas. Um, and the way that you can use those melts, Beth had a really good idea. She puts them in her sock drawer. Um, I put them in the back of my closet usually because they just smell good in the closet. Um, you can also, if you don't want to pour it into a silicone mold, like save your soup cans. Um, and you can always like just pour a bit of it into the soup can. Um, and put that in the back of your closet. Um, my friend Jill puts them in the cup holders in her car since there's only like this much that when your car gets warm, it makes your whole car smell like a blood orange or a grapefruit. It's dreamy. You could also do that like with a jar like this that just has a little bit left. But if you want to reuse your vessel or you want to bring it into the studio and get your reimbursement, but you still want that wax, this is a fun way to take care of that. Okay. Okay. So we're going to pull this out with my little oven mitt. Remember it's hot, so be very careful with your jar. There we go. And you're going to get wax on your oven mitt too, so don't use your favorite one. Oh, thanks, Katie. The new episode of Distance is really good. Allie's just so kind and beautiful and smart. She's got the most incredible story. Okay, so I'm just pouring it into my silicone mold. And then the best way to get your um, wick out of the bottom, we use little stickers. So when you're your um, jar is heated like this, that's the best time to really pry it out. Um, you can pry it out when it's cold too. It's just a little bit harder. So I like to do it when it's warm. But if you're worried about burning your little fingies, just wait. But I just use like a little wooden stick, like a paint stick. You can also use like a butter knife. And there's my wick and my sticker. I'm going to throw that away. Turn a little trashy can over here. I'm going to pull this off because my wax is melted. It's doing great. And then the other thing too is if you want to use your jar, like say uh, for like cotton balls or Q-tips, I know a lot of people use them in their bathroom or reuse them. Uh, you can just use a paper towel. Just be careful not to burn yourself on the jar and you just clean it out. See how clean that wax comes out? It's like perfect and ready to pour a candle into. I was saying earlier, I know people that um, will basically just melt down all their wax and then put a wick in and re-pour the candle. So it's just like a like a blur of so many different like delicious scents, but then you have a brand new candle to burn at your home. I was saying we should um, start carrying wicks on our site just so you can do that. Make your own candle out of your old candles. And then remember that you can always turn in your jars at Wax Buffalo um, and we reuse those candles. And the way that we reuse them is any candle that's brought back into us, we actually pour all of the remnants of all of our pours into them. We call those candles the studio and they're super discounted candles that you can find on our site. Uh, we're sold out of them right now. Sorry. But usually you can come back. We almost always release them through our insiders newsletter first because they go so fast. Um, but they're totally fully sustainable. Everything's been reused. We don't waste anything. Um, and so we're really proud of those. We call them our studio candle. And they basically just smell like walking into wax buffalo because it's all the different smells just like stacked on top of each other. It's pretty fun. Okay. So I'm going to put this down. We're going to let this cool. When this is fully cool, we'll be able to just pop them out. I, I like doing it with a silicone one. They pop out better than like a, those old school, like plastic ice cube holders. But you can also do it like in a paper cup. You can, you have lots of ways that you can do it. Um, also, Navy had the coolest idea. And so we've been doing this too. Um, 
for anybody that writes in the notes when you order that you'd like a clamshell, which are like the little plastic things that you can put melts into, um, we've just been throwing those in your order for free. So once you get done with your candle, you can do this process that we're doing over here. So I just have a pot of water on a, on a hot plate, but you could also do this on the stove. Just do it very, very low. And then you just take your candle when it's done. So you've got that little bit of wax left and you pop it in there and you just let it melt. I wonder if I can get two of this. Ooh, I can. We're going to do two at a time. Um, and then you can pour it out, make a melt. You can throw it in the trash if you're done with the wax um, and use that vessel as a little succulent holder or for cotton balls. You can bring it back in. We'll give you money for it. Um, you have lots of options, but it's just kind of a fun project to clean out your jars. And then I love doing it on the stove this way. You can also throw it in the freezer and you can just like, once it's frozen, you can basically just break that wax up and then throw it, throw it away in little chunks. I love doing this because it makes my house smell so good because the candle's warming on the stove really low. You want to keep it low, um, but it's kind of a, a fun way to get that wax out of there. Our wax has warmed to 170 degrees on our little candle maker thingy here. We sell these on the website as well. Um, I like this because it basically takes all of the work out of it. It does it for you. It heats it up. It beeps at you when it's time to do the oil. Um, it spins it for you. It spins it again once you put the oil in. I, I don't do that because I'm trying to teach you how to do it my way. But if if you wanted to do it nice and easy. And then it tells you when it's time to pour. There's like a little uh, like graphic here. And it says it has like a little pitcher pouring. And then it beeps at you. and goes beep, beep, beep. And that's when it's time to pour. And so we have these on the website if you're um, into it. But again, you can make candles with anything you have in your kitchen. A lot. When I first started, I I um, melted all my wax and things like this uh, before I started getting actual pouring pitchers. Actually, I should add a little water to it. Pot. Okay. All right, so our next candle, what kind of candle should we make now? I have my little beaker, so I'm gonna add some fragrance oil to my beaker. Um, last night we made this really delicious peppermint and eucalyptus candle. I was pretty happy with, so I think I'm gonna do that again because I already started burning the first one, which was earlier than I should. You really should wait 48 hours, but I could not wait. Um, but I think I'm gonna make another one because I know somebody that would love this one. It's really good. It's got peppermint. It's got eucalyptus. Like literally my sinuses just cleared. So I thought I would try putting a little lemongrass in there. Um, I'm using essential oils right now from Whole Foods. One of the reasons I'm doing that is because we're in Whole Foods. We're in the whole Midwest region of Whole Foods. So you can find us right now in their stores. Um, we're also in about 80 small boutiques across America. So you can find us in a lot of different states that you may be in. Oh, renegade viewers, um, which is very exciting. Do you let your candles cure before burning? Yes. Thank you for that question, Meredith. I do. Um, I really think 48 hours is key. It's interesting. Um, you know, like with soap, the longer it cures, the longer it'll last and it hardens. Candles aren't really like that. After about 48 hours, you're pretty golden um, to go ahead and, and burn and you'll get the same burn time that you'll get um, from a candle that has been sitting for six months curing. I tried a lot of different things to make sure that that was right. And it is <laughs> at least with our candles, with soy wax, uh, with the type that we're using, as long as you wait 48 hours before you burn your first candle, you'll get that 45 to 50 hour burn time. You just want it to get hard enough um, that, you know, it's not like basically melting as you're um, burning it. Great question, Meredith. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit of lemongrass from our Whole Foods essential oils. I have been using Whole Foods, well, specifically because we're in their store and that makes us very excited. Um, but also just like, it's a really great price Point for oils. Um, if you're into essential oils, there are definitely some ones that are higher priced and it's really hard for me to use a bottle of $40 oil in a candle. Um, you know, that's more for like, I think I would ingest that price point, but these give really great throws. Um, I like, I go and I get this specific one. There's a lot of other ones at Whole Foods, but I love this brand. It's been giving us really good candles in our, in our pouring studio. We do pouring classes next to our production studio. So we have a retail shop in front then we have a whole production room in the back. And then next to it, we have basically like a party room. So it's set up for, um, big old collaborations. Every Friday night we do, I'm sorry, not every Friday, every first Friday in the Haymarket, um, we do collaborations with other makers in town. So like, for instance, we did cider tasting with Sarah with cider and then poured apple cider candles or, um, 
we were supposed to be doing for uh, May 1st. I'm so sad we're not going to do it, but we were going to collaborate with Of the Earth Florals here in town and we were going to make flower crowns and then pour like a floral candle. Um, in June, we were supposed to be doing a cocktail making class and then we were going to pour like a boozy inspired, like absinthe would have been a really good one. Um, so every first Friday we sell tickets for that. And it's like just a super fun collaboration. It comes with, um, a fun cocktail and then you pour candles and you also get to learn how to make something else from a different, um, collaborator. And then we also host just candle making parties parties. So we have a lot of like, um, bachelorette parties and bridal showers. We do a ton of corporate team building events. That's been really fun. We have a lot of companies in town in Lincoln that have come in with their whole staff and they pour candles with us. And like such a fun connective thing. And we can even do really fun um, labels. So like this is an example of one we did um, in collaboration with Meg from Paper Kite. She actually drew this. Isn't this cute? This little Lincoln pendant. Um, and so we created a line of candles for her store that are all that Lincoln line. And every scent is a place in Lincoln. So Avana Cone or the Haymarket. We have one that's like a nod to all of the orchards here in town. Um, we did one specifically for her. So right now for the summertime, she has this like bubbly grapefruit one. But like at Christmas time, we did hot cocoa because she's a little kid store. So we can also do really cool custom like white labeling when companies come in and want to pour with us. And so that's really been really fun and popular. I think I'm talking about it a lot because I really miss it. It was really like a fun thing that we had just started really um, ramping up. We only had that space for about six months, got remodeled. My dad worked his little buns off to remodel it and it's beautiful. Um, we have a, a whole wall that we can do all of our photography on. So we go in there and we um, pull down these big seamless and we do photography in there um, and we throw parties. And so we'll be back. It's going to happen again, but I'm missing it deeply right now. Okay, so we've made a peppermint eucalyptus lemongrass candle. This smells awesome, actually. I like, um, I always like adding a few essential oil notes when I'm playing around because I do think it brightens the candle and it makes it um, just smell a little bit more authentic. It's, it's really beautiful. I kind of feel like it's the way that like when you cook with fresh herbs, um, you know, like when you're making a soup and you decide to like chop, like pick and chop the basil yourself and then put that in the soup. It's a different type of scent than when you put a dried basil in. Um, that's how I feel with essential oils and candles. I always think it brightens it. Um, it just gives it a different component. And I love to play with that. We do that in our pouring studio as well. Like in the candle, um, classes, we teach people how to mix like fragrance oils with essential oils or completely essential oil blends. When you're working with essential oils, you just want to add a little more um, than you probably would with a fragrance oil, uh, at least 20 drops, if not more in a nine ounce candle, just because they're a little lighter, but that's okay. If you're doing it at home, I'm sure you have that. That's what I started with. I made just candles with essential oils that I had in my cabinet when I first started making candles and I would pour them into pickle jars and soup cans. And I would go to thrift stores and find weird vessels and make candles. It's also how I learned to um, start investigating what wick size I should use because if you get some wonky jar at the thrift store and then just put a regular wick in there, it will not burn correctly. And so that's how I learned all about wick placement and sizing. Kristen says, I love your sweet tobacco candle. How did you decide on that scent? And there is a, is there a story behind it? Oh, Kristen, thank you for asking. Um, sweet tobacco was one of the, I think it was the second candle we added to our classic line. And yes, there is a story behind it. It's um, sweet tobacco smells like super... It's not what you think. It kind of smells like um, pipe tobacco. It's like going into, when I was living in Chicago, there was this old bookstore and you could go in there and like we would um, <laughs> go in there and my friend Travis always smoked pipes. And so we'd go in there and find old scripts. I love reading old scripts. I was, a, I, I love theater. In fact, my first business is I owned a children's theater. And so I would go and I would pull these old scripts off the shelves and read scripts and he would smoke pipe, pipe tobacco. And then my husband, John was always with us and he loves like dark, dark coffee. And so we'd always bring in coffees and there were all these really cool coffee shops. Um, this was in Wicker Park in Chicago before Wicker Park uh, was as trendy as it is now. Um, in fact, there was a coffee shop that was part of the, what was that show? The Real World. Remember The Real World? There was a, they lived in Wicker Park in this big loft above this coffee shop and the coffee shop was created for the show. But then all of us that lived in Chicago were like, sweet, there's this beautiful coffee shop in Wicker Park now. So the story behind Sweet Tobacco is um, when I think it was like 
John and I had just gotten married and we were buying Christmas gifts for all of our friends. And Travis is one of our like uh, besties from back in the day and still is. He lives um, out on the East Coast now. But <laughs> we wanted to get him a gift. And because like our whole world had been like going to bookstores and he would smoke his pipes and we loved it or we would sit outside in courtyards and, you know, drink beer and, um, and he would smoke his pipe. We loved the smell of it. Pipe smoke tobacco is so delicious. It smells delicious. It's very, very different than a cigarette smell. And a lot of times people come into our, our store and smell the sweet tobacco candle. And they're like, Oh, that's not what I expected. But the people who had grandpas that smoked pipes were like, I was, I was hoping this is what it would smell like. So it smells like so many people's grandpas or in our case, Travis, Anyway, John and I went to this pipe tobacco store to get his Christmas present <laughs> and um, it smelled amazing in there. And it was this tiny little store on Wells in Chicago, just up by North Avenue. And it was really cool. And we, we knew that he went in there a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. See Kristen? Yeah. So it's like your grandpa, right? Um, so we go in there and we're like, we would like to buy our friend some pipe tobacco as his, for his Christmas gift what should we get him? And we asked the guy and he's like, I mean, he was not helpful at all. He basically was like, I mean, what does he like? We're like, well, we think he likes pipe tobacco. <laughs> We're like, I don't know. What, what do people like here? And I think it was some sort of like a vanilla cherry. We smelled a bunch of stuff and we were like, oh, this smells amazing. Let's get him this one because we're the ones that are going to sit next to him while he smokes it. And this will be fun. And then he asked us how much we would like to get for him. And we were like, a pound, <laughs> which is a lot. We didn't know it was a lot. In fact, when Travis opened it at Christmas, he was like, oh, good gracious, this is so much tobacco. We were like, is it? I think he he may still have it. I, I didn't know. I didn't know how much that you put in a pipe. <laughs> and then, so honestly, I feel like every time I pick up sweet tobacco, that is like one of the memories it sends me back to is just like our time in Chicago in those old bookstores hanging out with like all of our friends and reading poetry and scripts and I don't know, just like trying to, trying to grow up together, you know? Um, interesting. Like it definitely always sends me back to that memory, but because it was like the second um, candle that I created in my line, I, every once in a while. So like when I smell the candle in the shop, I think it takes me back there, but every once in a while I'll run into somebody. Um, like I was at the tavern the third year of my business. And I walked by somebody that I did not know that smelled like sweet tobacco. And I was like, oh! it was like the moment that I was like, I, I'm, I'm out in the world in Lincoln and people that don't know me are using my things. It was such a like small business moment for me that like somebody that didn't know me bought a product from me and is wearing it in the world. Um, so now I feel like too, that that scent has been associated with just like, there was this moment in the tavern where I was like, it's good. I think I can do this. I think we're going to grow. Like this is, this is a, a big moment. And so it also kind of gives me all those feels now too. Sweet tobacco is incredibly sentimental in so many different capacities for me. Hey, thanks for asking that one. That was a long story. Sorry. You probably weren't ready for all of that, but thanks for letting me share. Um, okay. This smells amazing. It smells super uh, like pepperminty and eucalyptic, like it's opening me up, but it has that lemongrass to it. It just is like super bright. It smells really, really good. Okay. I think we're going to put that in our working differently. So I've already done all my stirs while I was telling you that very long story. We always stir our wax at least 40 times. Think of it as like at least stir it for 60 seconds to really get the oil emulsified into the wax. Don't stir too fast because you'll get air bubbles. Um, just nice and slow. Everything in the, the small batch process, I feel like, is slow. It's actually, I think, you know, we've talked a lot at Wax Buffalo about, like, what would it look like to scale? And we've had people asking, like, would you ever outsource pouring your candles? But for all of us that work at Wax Buffalo, this is the most therapeutic, beautiful part of candle making for us is, like, the process of melting the wax and adding the oil, picking your jar, slowly pouring... I think it would be really hard to give that up because we all just love it so much. All right. You're wanting to wick right in the center of your jar and you want to push down on the wick. So whether you're using a sticker, if you get one of our kits, it comes already pre-stickered for you to make it easy. Um, when I first started, I actually used to use a hot glue gun. I just stopped doing that because it is, a, it's a, it's like one more step. And so I don't do that anymore, but now we use a little sticker on our wicks. So it's perfectly wicked right in the center. And then you can just leave it loosey goosey like that to pour. You're just going to want to pour on the side. So we're going to let this go. It's not quite at, at 
body temperature yet. That's I like to pour at body temperature. So right around 100 degrees. 120 is okay too. Um, if you pour too hot, you end up getting kind of like a, a weird texture on the top of your candle. Um, sometimes uh, it, you'll get what's called a, a frosting. They call it frosting with soy wax, where it actually just looks almost like when you go outside and you see frost on the ground, that's what you'll see. Um, it's not bad. It, by, by no means is that a bad candle. I just like them to look a little glassier and more profesh. We figured out by letting it cool a little bit before we pour, we get a little bit better looking candle the first time. Now, if you goof up your candle, because it will happen, and it happened to me a lot in the first year, you can always clean it. And the way to clean it is to use a heat gun and just very gently melt that first layer of wax on your candle until it's a full pool of melted wax. And then you just let it be, let it dry, and it will usually dry really clean and look really pretty like this. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer. <laughs> it works too. Just do it on the low setting. Hold it kind of high so you're not blowing wax everywhere. Let it melt down, and then you'll have a perfect looking candle as well. It, I, I would only do that if you're gifting it. If you're not gifting it, then I would just let it be because it's going to burn perfectly um, regardless of the look on the top. Um, okay, so we're going to let this cool just a little bit more. It's I would say it's probably like 130. It's not quite at body temperature, but I think we could pour one of our little melts now. We've got one working its way down. So we've been doing two projects at once. We're pouring candles today um, in all different vessels and just kind of teaching you the process. But then we're also cleaning out our jars and creating melts. So if you have candles at home and you wanna clean them out, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, one way that's pretty simple is to just throw your jars in the freezer, pointing at my freezer here, um, and just let them sit in there for a few hours until the wax is super cool. It will condense from the sides. And then you can literally just take like a little wooden like a paint stick and break it up and just pour it out. And then you just pry the wick off with your wooden stick. Um, you can also do like use a butter knife if you don't have a paint stick lying around. Fun fact, when I first started Wax Buffalo, remember I told you I like did not want to spend money on anything. So that's why we do everything by touch um, instead of thermometers. Um, and that's like the way that I kind of built the company was to just only take the money that I made and invest it back in the company for a while. And so uh, I would go to all of the different stores in town and ask how many paint sticks I could have for free. <laughs> like I would go to Home Depot and be like, oh, can I have a few paint sticks? How many am I allowed to take? <laughs> and if you keep in mind that you can buy like a pack of hundred for $9.99, but I was like, oh, that's $9.99. I could invest back in the company if they were okay with giving me free paint sticks. So I would go to Home Depot and then Lowe's and then Menards and Walmart has a paint section. I would ask them and then I would do the whole round again <laughs> when I started running out of my paint sticks. Um, so all that to say, that's one of the chief ways that I built the company. Um, Christian is asking, is soy wax the easiest to use? You know, I honestly think such a great question, Kristen, that, um, it is when you're first starting, there's a lot of different kinds of soy wax, but it's pretty forgiving and, um, it has a low melting point. So it's, it's not like you're having to like get things super hot. You don't have to wear like masks and gloves, um, because it's a vegetable based soy wax, like getting it on your skin is totally okay. Um, as long as you're careful with the heated products so you don't burn yourself. Um, in fact, soy wax is a type of wax that you can literally, like, you can rub it into your skin and use it as a moisturizer. Um, in fact, my friend used to do that with our Armitage straight candle, and that is how we created our roll-ons. So we have roll-ons on the site that are, they nod to every scent that we create in our candle, our classic candle line, so you can wear the scents as well. And the only reason that those exist is because she was like, I love the Armitage straight candle so much, I would, like, let it burn down, and then I put the hot wax on my arms and I wear it as perfume. And I was like, that's amazing, and it is nourishing, but um, what if I made like an easier way for you to do that? And that's how we created our roll-ons, and those are super popular as well. You can find them on our site. But thank you for asking that. I think um, beeswax, coconut wax, so they're also pretty easy. Um, the best way to, like, if you're starting to try a new wax is to just Google like the melting point of each of those types of wax. And even with soy wax, um, <laughs> the, sound, the sound is sounding weird all of a sudden. Oh, 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 like my audio is? Oh, I wonder what it is. My audio is sounding weird. Can you hear me now? Is it like crackly? Maybe I've got my mic too far away from me. Yeah, like robotish. Okay. Hmm. Here comes John. He's going to fix it. Thanks for saying that. He's going to come. Oh, that worked? Just moving it forward worked? Okay. Maybe I had it too far away from me. I was moving it because I keep adding like jars and stuff. 
I think we're okay, John. John's the audio guy. He knows all the things. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate it. Um, okay. So I was talking about different waxes. So even soy wax, the different, there's different manufacturers of soy wax and each of them have different um, recommendations for how hot you should melt it, um, when you should add the oils and when you should pour. So looking all of that stuff up before you start in on your project really helps. Um, if you're buying our DIY kits, it's all on the cards of like what we want you to get it to. And we, we, uh, we say you can use a, a thermometer and we'll give you those temperatures, but we'll also teach you just to do it by touch the way that we do. Um, if you don't want to put your thermometers in. So, um, okay. So this is getting really close. Let's do one of these because these are also close. Oh, all the projects are happening at once. So we started to say, um, you can put it in the freezer and break up the wax with your paint stick that you got from Home Depot that they gifted to you. Or um, you can do what I'm doing right here, which is I'm, I'm basically melting my jars in a little pan. I'm just using a little hot plate over here. Um, normally I would just do this on my stove. I just didn't want it to be a video of my booty buns. So I'm doing it here so you guys can see it, but um, you can just do a very, very low simmer. So you just have warm water on your stove and then you can set your jars in. You wanna make sure when you're pulling your jars out that you're using something because the jars are very hot. So you can get your little oven mitt or your little washcloth like I have to pour them out. I love doing it this way because if you're doing it on your stove, they melt down and your whole house smells like the candle you've melted down again. So if you have the time to do it this way, this is like definitely, I almost always have one going at the house because I like to get my jars cleaned out and then re-pour, obviously, because I'm psycho about candles. So I'm going to pour it out. You can see it's all melty. See it gushy in there. One of the things to talk about is um, why we always have a little bit of wax left in our candles. Our goal is to always, I'm going to pour it into this little silicone mold. Let's see if you can see it here. Just looks like this. It's like, a, it's an ice cube silicone mold. And I'm just going to pour the wax right into it and create like a little square of wax. And when this hardens, I will just pop it out and then I'll have a little wax melt. You can use that in like a wax melter. Um, or somebody said they might pop them into their like sock drawer or you can put it in the back of your closet. You want your closet to smell pretty. Back of your coat closet, that would be a good one. And then I always just pry that our wicks come with a sticker, right? So if it's still warm, it comes out so easy and you just pry it out with a little wooden stick. There's my wick and I'm just gonna throw it away. And then you can like just basically wipe out the inside carefully with a paper towel to get those last remnants out if you want a nice clean jar. Just be careful because your jar is going to be warmish. If you do it really, really low, it doesn't get too hot. Like I'm obviously touching the jar. It's not hurting, but just be careful. It cool pretty fast. Okay. And now I have a perfectly clear, pretty cleaned out jar. My house smells beautiful because I was melting it on my stove and it's ready for another candle. I know a lot of people actually like melt down their candles and then just pour a new candle. We've been talking about throwing wicks up on the website just so we can help you do that. Um, it would smell just like our studio, just piles and piles of your candles. You have a fresh new candle. I am gonna set this down. It's gonna harden and we'll pop it out later and have cute little melts. And now I think it is time to pour our candle. How are we doing? Oh yeah, that feels like body temperature for sure. Is there anybody new that wants to know how to tell if a candle is at body temperature? I think I've explained it a few times, so I won't repeat myself if not. Okay, we're gonna pour. So we're pouring into this cute vessel. It says work differently. These are our frosted vessels. We do a lot of white labeling with these. Um, we have a lot of companies in town that we have created special scents for, or really cool labels, kind of like this one. This is our Lincoln line um, that we created for Meg at Paper Kite. These are really fun. Um, we've just been creating scents that remind us of Lincoln. So like Ivana Cone and the Orchard and the Haymarket. Um, okay. Sunken Gardens. We have a Sunken Gardens. It's really good. So we're going to pour in and you can just pour into, you know, usually you would just do it on the counter and pour, but I want you to be able to see it. So um, I'm just going to pour into the vessel. You can leave it straight and just try to miss the wick when you're pouring in. You want to pour in nice and slow. So again, you know, if you're not pouring too fast to get that air in there, you just go nice and slow, which is kind of the cool thing about buying anything from a small maker that's like small and handmade, small batch, is that you know that each one is poured with care. But then, of course, 
they're like made by human hands so they're always a little bit imperfect which I also love we always say everything is beautifully imperfect at wax buffalo for that reason <laughs> because sometimes we're just human so there's the candle we use these little um, wick holders to hold our wick in place you can get these online we don't have these in our kits as you can see it's just like a little silver thing that holds the wick in place um, but you can always use like a clothespin if you have those at home or when I first started, I would use pencils and I would just hold the wick in place with a pencil, basically like this. I'll show you with my wooden stick here. You can also use the paint stick that you got from Home Depot. See, and it just holds it up. When I first started, I, I literally just used our pens because I didn't want to spend money. And that's why we didn't put the silver things in the DIY kit. We tried to make the DIY kit as affordable as possible. We have uh, a whole pouring kit where you can pour two candles and it's only $40. And it's 15% off today on the website. So a super fun project without having to spend too much money. Our, my biggest thing is I didn't want to put things that you already would have in your kitchen into the kit that would raise the price on it. So I, you know, like I recommend just like putting your wax in one of these um, or like an old pouring pitcher, you know, like a thing you make pancakes out of. It's not going to hurt it. So wax does, it cleans up so nicely. Um, you just use warm water and wipe it out. And then, you know, you can wash it out with soapy warm water. Uh, if you are making candles at home, like I was to the extent where I was making like a hundred candles in a night, then you do kind of start to mess up your, uh, equipment. But otherwise I would say just use what you've got at home while you're just kind of creating your own personal candles. Oh, Hey, K bone for real. That's a great question. Um, are there, are some of our scents that we would suggest that are more manly when thinking of gifts? Um, all of our, that's a great question. All of our scents are pretty um, uh, neutral when it comes to like gender, I think, but there are definitely some that we see that men gravitate to. And so that's a great question. Um, always, always, always uh, sweet tobacco. I feel like it's our number one seller for men. Also red fern. Red fern was um, actually created and named after my grandma fern, but it is actually one of our more manly scents. Um, I thought it just smelled kind of like the Midwest, like when Midwest goes from spring to summer and it's like kind of that golden houry, like beautiful, like grassy and oak mossy. Um, it's kind of sweet and ambery. It's just, I think it feels like that happy, that happiness you feel when you're like, oh my goodness, in the Midwest, like the winter is hard. And so when you're finally into spring and then it's mushing into summer and it just smells like wet and happy outside, but like sunshiny and warm, that's what Red Fern was named after. My grandma is from Lincoln. And so one of the things that I would always do is come here and I would visit my grandma in the summer for a whole week by myself. She, she took every cousin and did that. And it was very special. You got to go shopping and go to the zoo. So I think this place has such a like nostalgic, beautiful memory and the smell of like the heat in Lincoln, Nebraska is so happy to me. And that's what Red Fern was named after, but it is one of our top man scents. Um, Into the Woods is a good one too. It's cedar wood, um, sandalwood. Uh, it's got a little cypress in it. Um, it's really, really good. It was, um, it was created after we traveled out in the Pacific Northwest. So we spent some time in Portland for a couple months, just like, traipsing out there and pretending to live there and um, just kind of resetting our brains for a bit a couple years ago with our kiddos and um, just loved it. The Pacific Northwest smells like woodsy and beautiful. Um, and so that one was created for uh, kind of all of the time that we spent in the Redwoods. So that's a really good one too. That said, um, I do find like, like um, our rosemary mint, even our blood orange, there are definitely like people that come and just love that, those candles too. Um, so yeah, that's a great question. But those are probably the top three. Sweet tobacco, red fern, and into the woods. Especially if someone's coming in and asking they'd like to buy a gift for a guy, we usually kind of lead them to those three cents because they tend to usually be a winner. Yeah. Thanks for asking and happy shopping. Okay. Our candle is done and it looks beautiful. So it will cool and it will take about 48 hours before it's ready to burn. It cools pretty quickly. You'll see, honestly... Let me show you. This is the candle that we made at the beginning of this Renegade Fair. So right around noon, it's now an hour and 45 minutes in and it's completely cool. You know, I can move it around, it's it's done. 
Um, but you'll want to let it sit at least 48 hours because it will harden and then you'll get that 45 to 50 hour burn that you can get with soy wax. So it's worth it to wait if you can, if you can, like I said, I already burned one from last night because it was so good. I just wanted to see how it, <laughs> how the throw would be when it was hot. And that was that peppermint eucalyptus one that we made last night. I think we're going to have to put that in one of the collections coming up. Um, we have four scents in our spring collection going on right now and we're at the end of them so if you love any of those spring scents this is definitely a time to sneak into the website and stock up because they're starting to go away we're down to like the last of especially like hummingbird it's gone pretty fast so we have willow tree which is very lilac-y and um fresh it, it literally smells like standing next to a lilac bush um it was created from a memory that i had just as a child um, because we had tons of lilac bushes all around our home and my mom would always go out. You know how lilac season is really fast. It's like two weeks. And if it like rains too much or it gets a little bit cold, it's even, uh, shorter than that. So you have to go out and you have to snip, 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 and you fill your house with ball jars full of lilacs. And she always did. We had them in every room. Um, and we would just like replace them every three days because they don't last very long in water. If someone has a trick for that, I would love to know that. I bet of the earth, I should ask her. Natalie would know how to keep lilacs healthy. Um, but it just smells like my childhood and like my happy little darling bungalow on B street. So, um, that's what that one is created after. Um, we have a lavender candle. This is the first time we've offered a lavender in any of our collections and it's beautiful. Um, just like, like very warm and calm. It's been like such a good, like kind of yoga candle. And then the last one that we have is avocado, which is also new to our line. And, um, we'll be going away with the spring scents and it's dreamy. Uh, just kind of nourishing and clean. Um, and that one's been really popular as well. So all of those are still up on the site and they're on sale. We'll be introducing the summer line um, next month. So coming up really soon, we have really good ones in store for summer. You guys want to know? I'll tell you. We are bringing back our pineapple candle, which is just like bright and um, punchy. And it's so good in the summer. It just smells like happy. Um, so that one's coming back. We have a really popular one that is a fig based one, um, with hints of rhubarb. So that one's coming back for the summer. And then this is going to make everyone very excited. Our lemon tonic is coming back for the summer as well. We created that candle in collaboration with Lululemon. Um, when they opened their store here in Lincoln, Nebraska, we were all very excited. And so they asked us to create a candle that was, um, you know, kind of a nod to their brand. And so we created this, um, it's almost like a, it's hard to describe, but like a spa like lemon, it's lemon, but it's also warm, um, and clean and definitely like, like I would do yoga to that candle, but we also, we just didn't want to make like a classic, like, well, let's do like a Copal. We wanted it to smell like Lululemon. And so, um, it's beautiful. Um, and it's called lemon tonic. And so it's coming back in the summer. It's one of our best sellers in the summer. It usually flies out of the shop. Um, and then, Oh, and then we have one more that I'm very excited about. We are bringing in Palo Santo for the summer. Um, I have just fallen in love with Palo Santo. I've been wearing it. We um, created these like really beautiful Palo Santo bundles. Look at that cute little X. <laughs> um, so I wanted a candle that smelled kind of like this that I could keep going. I love burning this in the home and it does linger in your air um, wonderfully, but um but then it goes away and you have to light it again. And so we've created a Palo Santo candle that is just dreamy and that is coming out for summer too. And that'll be a pretty small batch. Um, and we use quite a bit of essential oil in that candle too. So that's why it's a smaller batch. If you can, if that makes sense. Um, Beth, thanks for asking when we release our summer scents. So it will be right around mid May for our insiders. So we always release all of our, um, lines early for our email subscribers. Um, just kind of as a thank you for being a part of our little like family. Um, we only do like one email a month or a week. They come out on Tuesday nights and then we always try to add a little something special to those emails. We started doing the email interestingly because we just realized so many people were missing things on like Instagram or Facebook and um, you know, the algorithms kind of make it so that sometimes you don't see what people post. And we did a big sale, um, not this last one, but the one before. And so many people missed it because we only posted about it on Instagram. We were like, we probably need to create an email newsletter. So that's where that is. But to say thank you, we always release our summer scents or our seasonal scents early. It's also where we'll release our sales early. Um, if we have anything left in the spring line, those will go on sale to our insiders first, that kind of stuff. But yeah, so we're pretty close. We're like two weeks away from summer being released. Um, and I am excited. We've already, they're already um, poured and ready to go. 
And oh, to get on the email list, you can just pop into our um, our website at waxbuffalo.com. Thanks for asking, Beth. Um, and you can find it. There's like a little link at the bottom. It says sign up for the email newsletter. I think there's a link at the top. We have like a pop-up that's going to come up. We're very excited about you <laughs> joining our email list. We have lots of ways you can do it. You just click in, add your email, and then you'll be added. Um, so you can also uh, add yourself to that one. And then we also have an email that goes out um, through YouTube for our series distance. So every Sunday we are doing a um, special kind of episodic Zoom based television show where I talk to different creatives across the US um, and just talk about like who they are and what they're doing and then how they're staying busy during the um, pandemic and then what they're doing for their community. And all of them are doing just incredible things. Um, and so we've had some really neat conversations up there. And then while I talk to them, I create a candle, kind of like I've been doing here today. Um, it's very specific to them. So they tell me the scents they love um, and like memories they have. And we create a candle just for them. And we usually do like very fun vessels. Like we have some coming out in like in this. We did like a fun, bright blue one. We did like a beautiful like ceramic, like white ceramic gold dipped one, all kinds of fun things. Um, and then we create a batch of those and then we sell those on Sunday night and the proceeds from those candles go to, uh, the Lincoln food bank just to help, um, you know, kind of with all of the kiddos that are out of school right now that really depend on those, um, those meals provided through LPS. So that has been a really fun project. And we always, um, release all of those candles early to the insiders as well. Um, just because they go really fast, which is exciting. Um, but they do. So those are all the things happening in Candleland right now. We have one more candle left to pour into our little melt. Um, so I think we should do that. We're nearing the end of our time. This has been really fun. Thanks for letting me jump on. And I, I hope you got to learn a little bit about candle making and a little bit about Wax Buffalo and just who we are as a company. Um, we've been so, so grateful for everyone that has been just a part of the community supporting not only us, but all of the small businesses here in Lincoln, but we're even seeing it across the country. People have just really stepped up and um, done some really beautiful things. Um, and even just like seeing the notes coming through, you can, I can tell that um, not only are you gifting like beautiful gifts to your friends, but you're also specifically choosing small businesses to make sure that we stay alive. And that is huge. And we couldn't be more grateful. Uh, my friend, actually, um, I see an order from her. It comes through once a week. She picks a friend and she sends them a candle. And she was like, it's my way of supporting your small business and also telling everyone I know that I love them through a candle, which I just think is the sweetest. And then, as, and then I read all her notes to all of her friends and they're beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's been like, it's definitely been like a, a hard time. There's a lot of really scary stuff. I have friends, um, you know, that are on the front lines in so many different capacities and like reading their stories. I just like go to bed praying for each and every one of them each night. Um, it's a scary time, but it's also been a like really beautiful thing to see like how humanity steps up and responds and takes care of each other. It's, I, I just keep thinking of that quote, you know, from Mr. Rogers that, you know, in scary times, always look for the people that are helping. And there are so many right now um, in every capacity, not only like on the front lines, but even people that, you know, uh, using their artistry, using their creativity to like give back in some way. And, and it's been really cool to see. So I feel really lucky that I get to talk to these amazing people once a week and hear their story. And um, yeah, it feels very, very special. Um, okay. So we've warmed up our little jar. We just warmed it up on a little pan here. I have a hot plate here, but you can also do this on the stove, obviously. And you just want to be careful when you're grabbing your jar out of there, cause it's going to be pretty warm. Um, and we're just pouring into this little cute silicone mold. We're just making little melts. I like the silicone molds because they're so easy to pop back out. I have a, you can make them in just like a normal ice cube tray and you basically just have to whack them to get them out. Um, but you risk them breaking apart as they come back out uh, where the silicone is so much easier to pop out. The other thing you could use is like a little paper cup or a little plastic cup that you can pop out. Um, I've also done it sometimes where I just actually pour the wax into soup cans and then I put those in the back of closets all over our house. So everything smells good. We have, um, we did have two English bulldogs. We just have one now. We lost one, but, um, little Gabby Lou is a big old stinky bulldog and she's old. She's about 13 years old. And, um, she is like always my, I don't, I love her, but I don't want my house to smell like her. And so I'm, I'm constantly like lighting candles and moving wax into closets. And like, she snoozes in the little room that has like a little, you know, wax melt in there. So it smells a little better. 
I'd like to think that she enjoys it too, right? Okay, so I'm pulling out my wax. Be careful because your jar is going to be hot. And we're just going to pour this into our silicone mold. And that is what I'm doing right now. And these will, um, you can definitely, like, there always are going to be like little bits, you know, left from your wick that are going to be in your jar, those little black bits. If, you, if you're making a melt that you want to actually gift to someone, which is cute. I like to make them and then I wrap them in like little brown tissue and put a sticker on it, you know, and pop them into gifts. But you can pour your candle through one of these and it will catch most of your, um, like that little, like the wick bits that are in there. If you are just making this for yourself, it does not really matter to have those in there. And it's simpler to not have to worry about it. And then you just um, wipe your jar out with a paper towel. Again, be careful because it's warm. This is also the perfect time to pop your wick out of there. Because it's warm, that little sticker is gonna dislodge easier. And I just whack it out with like a little wooden paint. You can also use like a butter knife. Throw your wick away. We wick our jars in a way that we always have wax left at the bottom because we don't want an open flame on a glass jar in your home. And so we make sure that you always get your 45 to 50 hour burn time out of your candle, but you'll always have a little wax left just for your safety. Um, and so this is a fun way to reuse that wax. Our favorite ways to make melts, um, you obviously can just throw it away if you're done with the wax, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, but if you like to save it, you can make the melts. Um, I know people that actually just would take a jar like this, you'd stick a wick in it and then you could just warm them up and continue to pour wax into your jar until you've created a brand new candle, just like layered with all your other candles. So that's a fun way to do it. Um, you could pour it, like I said, in a soup can. Uh, my friend Jill, takes her old jars that just have a little bit of wax left at the bottom and she puts them in her cup holder in the car so that it smells really good in her car, but it's not so much wax that it would like slosh out. You wouldn't want to pull a full candle because it got really, really hot. It would melt, but she puts just a little bit and then it's like she opens up her car and it smells like a sweet tobacco. It's very dreamy. I love that idea too. So, okay. Oh my goodness. We did it. Thanks for spending two hours with us here on the Wax Buffalo. I, um, I really appreciate everybody that stopped by and thanks for all your fun questions. And I hope you learned a little bit about candle making today and just some fun projects you can do at home um, while you're hanging out. Always, always, you can hit us like in the DMs and ask questions about candle making. Um, we'll leave this up for all of you that have purchased the DIY kit. So you can come in and watch a bit of this. <laughs> you probably won't need all two hours, but you could watch a bit and um, make candles with this little YouTube video. If you have questions, hopefully I'll answer them throughout the process. And um, again, don't forget, we have a sale going all through the Renegade Day today. It's up on the website. So if you click through to waxbuffalo.com, you can find all the sales and all the fun products I talked about today. Um, there's a code at the top of the website and that's your discount code. So make sure you grab that and use it when you check out to get your discount today. Um, thanks so much for stopping by. This has been so, so, so fun. I hope you're all staying home and staying safe. Um, I know that we love you and that we're grateful for the way that you've been supporting small business. And um, thanks for thanks for Renegade Market too for making this possible. Such a cool thing that they're doing. There's so many amazing makers all throughout this process, and most of us are keeping our YouTubes up um, like this. I'm hoping to go check out all the makers that I missed while I was chatting my head off with you. Um, but definitely go in and support some small biz and support some artists and find someone new uh, and just take advantage of what the Renegade Market has set up for all of us to find each other. It's a really cool thing. Okay. I'm sending you all my love. I'm going to get my face really close to the camera now. I'm so sorry. I'm going to end this stream. Thanks for being here. Let me get my little mousy here. Okay, bye.